Okay, so let's move on from some of these formalities about data types and structures and get back to some of the fun stuff, which is the actual data analysis. So you've heard this phrase tidyverse tossed around already in the class. In fact, you used parts of the tidyverse last week. I asked you to install it and I asked you to rely on it to make some uh, nice plots and so forth. So I want to take today to tell you a little bit about what this tidyverse thing is, and then we'll learn how to use the other main package in the tidyverse. So we'll start, as we often do, with a history lesson of R. What is the tidyverse? How did it come to be? So this word tidyverse is not actually a package itself. It refers to a collection of many packages. And these packages all kind of agree to follow a certain consistent philosophy and a certain consistent structure to the functions that are written into the packages. And you'll often hear this phrase base R used in contrast to the tidyverse. People will say, you know, do you prefer to do this analysis in the tidyverse style or the base R style? That's a little bit of a misnomer because base R really just refers to what's built in, what comes with R, um, what you can do without installing extra packages. So really everyone uses base R. But you'll kind of hear people talk about whether continuing to use base R versus converting to these tidyverse approaches um, is their preferred method. So how did this get started? Well, in 2008, Hadley Wickham, who we've already mentioned, as part of his PhD dissertation, he released two packages, PlyR and ggplot. And these two packages were kind of a new way to approach R analysis, and so they started slightly getting popular. I actually remember a friend saying, hey, you should check these out to me in 2008, and I was very stubborn. I said, no, I don't want to. I don't want to learn anything new. Obviously, I regret that, and now I love the tidyverse. But in any case, this kind of slowly got started in 2008. Another thing that happened was in 2012, this pipe operator was created. You will have seen this one last week. Your tutorial told you a little bit about it. This pipe operator is not technically part of the tidyverse. It was released separately. Uh, but the entire tidyverse philosophy is now very much built around the pipe, around being able to make functions that work well with this pipe approach. As we mentioned last week, in 2014, Hadley Wickham was hired onto our studio as a full-time paid R package developer. And at that same time, the package dplyr was released, which was an update to plyr. And that's the current version of the package. That's what we're going to learn today. It's probably the most important package in the tidyverse, arguably ggplot2 that you used last week. In any case, those two are definitely the backbone of the tidyverse, uh, and so we'll cover them this week. And so today, as we mentioned last week, there is a complete team of paid developers. Their only job is to keep developing and keep promoting these packages. You can follow this link for a lot more information about which packages are currently in the tidyverse. There's a lot of them. And about some of these philosophies that kind of underpin how these packages relate to each other. So one of the main philosophies of these tidyverse packages is what's called pipe-friendly functions. We'll get into that in a moment. And another main philosophy is that instead of symbols or instead of abbreviations, uh, functions are named with English verbs. And the idea here is to make things more accessible and more readable. And of course, this is very subjective. So you can see these two lines of code here. The first block, that's the tidyverse code. And now you haven't seen this data set, most likely. It's a data set of penguins, you might infer from the name. And what we're doing here is we're taking this data set and narrowing it down to only the Adelie species of penguins. And now you didn't know there was a variable called species, and you probably didn't know that Adelie was a penguin. Maybe you did, that's cool. But what you can do is look at this code and pretty much infer what's happening. And now that second line there would be the base R way to do it. The base R way would say, take the data set penguins, let's use brackets to subset it into a smaller data set. Which pieces do I want to keep? I want to keep the pieces where the species variable has the value of Adelie. And so both these pro approaches are identical. These pro approaches are both valid. And it's really up to you which one you prefer. So I'd say take a look at this code right now at the beginning of your R career and kind of ask yourself which one makes you feel good inside. Which one is easy for you to read? Which one are you excited to write? There's no single right answer here. Now, as with anything, there's some pros and some cons to the tidyverse. Um, one of the main pros is this consistent behavior of functions. By which I mean, our, uh, sorry, the tidyverse is really, really specific about what input it's willing to take into a function and what output it's going to give. 
So we just talked about the importance of keeping track of data types and data structures and making sure that you're not getting any mysterious hidden errors because of that. And so these tidyverse functions are very, very opinionated. That's the computer science word for it. Uh, what it means is that a function that gives back a list, it's always giving back a list. There isn't something you could secretly happen to accidentally feed to it in the data that would cause it to calculate differently and give back a vector. And so this is really nice. You have very predictable output. It's much harder to make these accidental kind of hidden errors that don't throw an error or a warning, but that actually mess up your process. Another advantage is the fact that these developers are paid. And so you actually have people whose job it is to maintain packages. So something that happens in R and in any open source language is you might be doing a task, and so you find a package that will help you with your task. And then you realize that that package was written 10 years ago, the author hasn't returned to it, it was a side project, they haven't updated it, maybe it doesn't work with the current version of R, maybe it's not modern with the new methods of the time, maybe it's just slow. And so actually that package is no longer useful to you. And so what's cool is that these tidyverse packages, because they have paid developers, are pretty guaranteed to be constantly updated, to be constantly fresh. The other nice thing is that because, again, these people are paid to uh, share the information about the packages, there's a lot more documentation and tutorials about the tidyverse than there tend to be about other packages. And the ones that are there tend to be a little more polished, a little more professional. Um, the, the primers that you've already been working on are coming from our studio and the tidyverse. And so this is nice. There's kind of this ecosystem of reliable, predictable packages that have documentation of how to use them. And another thing about the tidyverse, and uh, this is my personal opinion, I think the community around the tidyverse is just incredibly welcoming, it's incredibly diverse, there's a really, really good culture. Uh, it, a lot of this culture happens on Twitter, so if you haven't already checked out the rstats Twitter, that is a whole universe. Um, but every time that I interact with the people that are part of this tidyverse community, I feel that they are committed to diversity, they are committed to being welcoming, they are committed to equality, um, and they're just generally really welcoming to beginners. I've seen it happen many times where someone asks a very, very beginner question on Twitter, and someone like Hadley Wickham comes in and answers them. So I personally think that's really cool. That's a big part of my life right now. Um, it doesn't have to be part of yours, but I want you to be aware that uh, programming is not just about what you write on the computer screen. There's a community around it, there's a culture around it. Different languages and different subsets of languages have different communities, and you should be aware of that. Having said that, not everything is perfect, so here's some cons of the tidyverse. One of the drawbacks is that because these functions are so opinionated, they do a specific thing very well. And if you get into a situation where you're a little more advanced or you're trying to do something a little more complex or unusual or strange, it can sometimes be hard to find tidyverse tools that can do that very unusual task. So while I almost entirely program in the tidyverse these days myself, I'll often find myself running into strange niche problems every so often, and I revert back to base R just because that's the only way I can figure out to solve it. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but you should be aware that some of this predictability comes with a trade-off in flexibility. It's also true that often tidyverse packages are a little slower. They're written for that readability and that convenience rather than for optimization. Um, this is becoming less and less true. It's become a priority of the developers recently to get faster. But it's still true that if you're working with really big data or if speed is a concern, you might need to turn to other tools. Another slightly frustrating kind of good and bad thing, blessing in disguise of the tidyverse, is that it is updating frequently. Uh, the people on the tidyverse team are constantly thinking about how to rework these functions to make them even more convenient or even more clear. And so it's evolving very rapidly. And this can sometimes mean that your old code is unrunnable. You might use a function from the tidyverse, and then two years later, you haven't changed your code, it's the same function, but now it doesn't work because they have changed the way that that function operates, the type of input it expects, and so on. Now there's ways to tell which packages are what's called stable, are not likely to change, and which ones aren't, but that's a little bit of a hassle to have to keep track of whether what you're using is kind of experimental or not. And as we mentioned last week, there are objections to this influence, to the fact that this ecosystem of functions uh, is often what people find first and learn first, and maybe they're missing out on better or just different tools because of that undue influence of the private company. So, 
Having said all that, should you want to use the tidyverse? Well, that's a personal question and I can't answer it for you. I should make it clear, even the most diehard tidyverse fanatic, fanatics, I would say I'm one of them, I have a tidyverse shirt, um, even people like me, we use Basar all the time, we use other packages all the time. It's not like if I can't figure out how to do it in the tidyverse, I can't do it. I prefer the tidyverse, but that doesn't mean that all the other wealth that R has to offer isn't available. In the end, if you're not excited to write your code, you're probably not going to write your code. And in the end, if your code looks good but doesn't work, it's not good code. So the best approach for you is the one that's going to get you coding, that's one that's going to get you excited, the one that you enjoy, that's clear to you, and the one that's going to actually do the thing you're trying to do correctly. So in this class, I'm not going to police your packages. I am going to teach you Tidyverse first because that's what I like to use. But any solution that you find from any package at all, if it gets the job done, it's fine. So you should feel free to pursue whatever base R, tidyverse, third-party package, or combination thereof feels best to you or feels clear to you. Having said that, as we walk through today, most of my lessons will be in the tidyverse. The exams and lab assignments and so forth are written to be solvable in the tidyverse if you choose to. Uh, so this is a tidyverse first class, and if you're excited about that, then please dive in try to learn the tidy way, and that can be a lot of fun too.